Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at the new proof of useful work from Flux. So this is at Mining Disrupt. I don't know if the people on the channel know, but this is a, basically a place where miners go and they talk about mining and unveil stuff from different mining corporations, I guess, or technology companies. They'll release, it could be like mining boards or it could be some technology underlying a coin. And this is what we're getting from Flux. So we've known about proof of useful work for a while. This is just them showcasing and going in depth into it. Now I'm gonna link everything that I have in this video in the description below so you can skip around. I'm not actually gonna play the full video, just we're gonna skip around it and then discuss some other things about proof of useful work. So they've unveiled it here to a lot of Bitcoin miners. That was what was said in this conference that a lot of them might not know about Flux mining just because the main kind of demographic of mining disrupt is going to be Bitcoin miners because that's the biggest mining platform. And this is from Hobbyist Miner. It's just the presentation for proof of useful work. So they go over how it's kind of projected out to be in terms of what computing they can do with the technology. Just goes through that, like how it works, how you can switch from Fluxcoin to useful work and other coins to useful work, and then have it on standby for useful work as well. And then if we go forward, it talks about the hardware recommendations that you need. And then lastly, the main thing that we really want to look at is the dashboard for proof of useful work, because that can give us some information about proof of useful work for Fluxcoin. So they've made it very easy where it's just a login thing or a hash thing. So you click one of these buttons, I'm assuming, and it takes you to this type of dashboard here. And we've seen kind of different iterations of these dashboards, which we'll move on to in a little bit, but as you can see here, it's just talking about workers, the system controls, system utility, how many GPUs, CPUs, stuff like that, how much per hour in USD, I believe that is. And then the benchmark score here, uptime, I believe that says cloud or service right there. So depending on which kind of worker you're using, you could have different stats for these, like how much you're making per hour, what your benchmark score is, how much uptime you have on your rigs and uptime will be one of the main things that alludes to you having jobs on the network because if you have reliable uptime then you're more likely to be able to be used for proof of use or work and then it just goes over to the benchmarking kind of dashboard and it's kind of like nice hash in a way that nice hash will benchmark all of your components on your computer and then it will basically find which one is the best coin to mine with now, they did actually mention in this that it kind of will work like nice hash where you can put it onto the proof of useful work and you can actually mine other coins through there. So the kind of same mechanism that nice hash has, it all collates it into one and you can just mine from there onto different coins. We see this in this other proof of useful work dashboard right here. We have four times the RXT A6000s here. That's what they have running. And then it just shows you know balance here the mining farm and this is the main one that we want to look at because you can see here they have figures for zell hash i think that's blake 206 i don't really know because the quality on this picture is not as good and then they have etc hash at 5.6 giga hash so you can mine on various different algorithms so you could be like on dynex nexa radian anything that you want to mine on through this as in like a nice hash kind of switching algorithm. I'm sure that there's gonna be ways to switch kind of seamlessly to the most profitable through this proof of useful work dashboard. But for the most part, that is one of the main things that I think is interesting that we can mine different coins through here. And then it says uh, unpaid balance, current profitability, power consumption, you know, just kind of standard things that you'd want. Then right here we have jobs. So there's gonna be jobs on the network which you can choose to compete with i believe or it could just be set to useful work and you just do any type of job that they kind of direct your gpu into there's a flux marketplace here so i'm assuming that the marketplace kind of alludes to people that want to use the useful work so like universities and stuff like that they would go on the marketplace and they would see which gpus are available for them to start actually giving jobs onto the network Lastly here, we see the recent jobs. So 
this is what I mean. You'd go on this marketplace and then you'd post a job for a certain amount of flux or USDT. Maybe I don't know what they're going to be using. I'm assuming it's flux as the main currency. And it says here artificial intelligence, gaming and rendering. So these are jobs that this like computer or this farm has actually completed on the network. And this is the rewards for them. I don't believe parallel assets will be part of those rewards. I'm not sure I... That's one of the questions that I'd like to ask them about parallel assets and how that works with the recent job rewards. And then up here, they said subscribe services, artificial intelligence, rendering and gaming. So there's certain workers kind of allocated to these things. So maybe you have workers, you have 12 here, which are on. You put them on various different things, depending on what kind of benchmarks you get. As you can see here, that's when you're benchmarking. So if you get good benchmarks, you can put them onto artificial intelligence. Maybe if it's less, you put them onto rendering and less you put onto gaming. So that's kind of an overall of what we're looking at for proof of useful work from Flux. Now they haven't released any numbers. And as I said, I was gonna make a video in the previous video around when this actually comes out. We're gonna make a video on what's more profitable to mine with, whether it be Dynex or proof of useful work with Flux. And we'll get a little bit into that at the end of the video. However, to actually download this, I believe Hobbyist Miner said in the comments here, over the next week or two, the links will drop to download Flux Core and jump in. So there's probably gonna be a beta for it. And that's probably when we're gonna start joining the network. We'll obviously make a video on that. So this is what they're naming it, Flux Core. And I'm assuming over time, you know, we'll see more updates come to this and there'll be different jobs coming on the network because obviously as Flux grows, there's more opportunity for investors to come in and use the service of useful work. And that means that we can make more profits from our mining rigs rather than just mining Flux on its own. So they also unveiled the OctoMiner. I don't know if you've seen, I don't know if anyone's seen this, but OctoMiner and Flux are having like a collaboration where they have an OctoMiner for this proof of useful work. And I don't know what these are. I think they're A2000s or 4000s, depending on the models. And we have them in the racks for the server. So what happens with these is there's fans at the top. You don't actually need to blow the fans in the GPUs if you don't want to, because these fans at the top are very powerful. They blow air through and you've basically got like a server kind of case coming on here with, you know, the correct power units. If we see there, we can got, we've got them all plugged in. I don't know what the maximum capacity will be for GPUs like you probably won't be able to put really powerful GPUs into here without having extra power supplies But for the most part these really efficient GPUs are probably going to be okay Speaking of GPUs and this is not really to do with proof of useful work Because that's going to be a different metric for GPU mining as in some GPUs that are great on the flux network might not be the ones that people want for artificial intelligence if that makes sense But this is just a top five I believe this came out two days ago, no, one day ago. Uh, the top five best GPUs to mine Flux with. We have the top 4070 Ti, 6600 XT, the 2080, and we know the 20 series has always been good on Flux, the 6950 XT and the 4080. So very efficient. I believe a lot of people, they had their 20 series from Ethereum mining they would probably have to migrate over to Flux just because all the 20 series are very efficient for Flux mining. But right here, we're seeing the 40 series very efficient, but that's just because they're very powerful as well. Surprising to see the 6600 XT, but AMD cards are very efficient on a lot of algorithms. I think they're overall more efficient than Nvidia, but Nvidia have more hashing power on the actual cards. So in this video as well, they talk about the utilization of the nodes and spreading basically the decentralization of the whole Flux network. And Flux isn't just about the coin, it's more about the kind of overall network because they have this Flux cloud where you can set up WordPress and you can run websites through it. So the actual Flux coin is a very small part of the whole Flux network, if that makes sense. And then lastly, I want to talk about the video that I possibly will be making, where it's Dynex versus Flux proof of useful work. We know that these two coins are going to be proof of useful work. Dynex already has their own one. Flux hasn't actually come on to proof of useful work yet. 
Daniel Keller of Flux said, uh, Dynex coin, let's have a proof of useful work debate on the validity of your current model versus Flux's. I'm positive people would love to hear how your model compares to us and what useful work you are actually doing. I'll donate 5,000 to charity of your choice if you come to a Twitter space. So very different algorithms and very different jobs. We'll be going to proof of useful work and Dynex coin. I know Dynex coin is more focused on, you know, useful work in terms of computing, like simulations and stuff like that. As they say on the website, they do have machine learning, which is going to be kind of like AI, which is, you know, gaming included and fintech and pharmaceutical. But I believe that proof of useful work on Flux would be those type of jobs as well. However, we are obviously going to make a video on that and see which ones are the most profitable over time. So they say here that they have finished jobs, but we can't actually see the jobs. Like we can't tell what they are. It just says ML there. It doesn't actually show you what the jobs were completed, which I'd like to see. As we saw on this homepage, you could see artificial intelligence done, gaming done, rendering done. I know Dynex, I had a couple of questions for them and they answered it on Twitter, which was good. And they said that that will be kind of shown towards the end of the year, what jobs are actually on the network and which ones have been completed. But we'll have to see and wait until that actually comes out. They've actually changed the website since the last time I've seen the, the Dynex coin website. So that would have been probably about two months ago since I've actually looked. But Dynex coin has taken off and there's a lot of price action going on for Dynex coin. So it's made it very profitable to actually mine Dynex coin because it's so efficient as well. So it's interesting to see, we could see a debate between Daniel Keller and the Dynex coin team. We could see how their proof of useful work model compares to the proof of useful work from Flux. Hopefully that will be coming out. Maybe we won't see it, but I'd like to see some sort of debate and just see how the two kind of networks compare to each other. If you have any thoughts on any of this Flux new proof of useful work, Please leave them in the comments below. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer them. Leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more content like this.